Hi, I'm Ryan Hootmacher, the Centered Chef, and I'm traveling to grocery stores around the country on a mission to find people with food allergies. Now, it's very likely that in this store in Chicago right now, there's someone with that forbidden food list. What I want to do is find them. I want to plan a meal with them, I want to go shopping, and then take them back to my kitchen to cook not only one meal, but I want to teach them how to do this in their everyday life. I'm your chef to go, and this is a food allergy intervention. So my film crew and I were filming a show called Chef to Go, and we're looking for people who have food allergies. I do not. Do you have food allergies? Does anybody in your family have food allergies? No. Luckily, I have not. Hi, oh, Chef, how are you? What's your name? Mike. Mike. I'm filming a show called Chef to Go right now, and we're looking for people that have food allergies. Okay. I wonder if that's something that you're familiar with personally, or if there's somebody in your family. Uh, I, I am familiar with it. I, I don't have it, but I have a friend who is uh, allergic to shellfish. I have food allergy. You do? Yeah. What, what, what allergies are those? Avocados. Avocados. Uh -huh. How long and have melons. you been? Avocados and melons. We're looking for people with food allergies. I wondered if that's something that you work with. Do I with. look like I have an allergy? I'm just asking. <laughs> I am just asking. Uh, yeah. Tree fruit. I actually have allergies to, uh, to fish. You have allergies to fish? Yeah. That's Wow. And, uh, and how about you? I, I don't, but um, our, our daughter has quite a few. <laughs> Your daughter has quite a few? Yeah. yeah a lot. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Um, uh, well, I, I, there's a list of it. We actually, yeah. You, we, brought, uh, you brought the list with you? <laughs> yeah. Well, we just got back from the allergist uh, this week, so. Um, we this a, week? A new list. This is very timely. Yeah. Okay. What do we got here? Uh, we have uh, wheat, gluten, eggs, sesame, peanut, pea, uh, soy, tree nuts, milk, garlic, casein, sunflower seeds, whey, and chickpea. You just threw the book at me right there. <laughs> yeah. I was not expecting that. Let's talk about this for a second. So, your daughter's name? Gray. 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 Yeah. How has this How has this list changed the way that you're shopping out here today? It's definitely tough. Like, you gotta read everything and make sure she can eat it. So it's, uh, it's been tough. A lot of tough. label reading. Yeah. A lot of label reading. And with that, do you feel like you need a little bit of help with? Definitely. Because that's actually what I'm out here doing today. I wanted to select one person to come back to cook with me in my kitchen. Okay. And, and I want to select the two of you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you're open to that? Sure, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, so one thing that we have to do, first and foremost, is we have to come up with a menu, okay. all right? We have to come up with a menu right now. So we're talking about Gray's allergies, and we're talking about your allergies. Mm -hmm. So we want to get creative here. So what I'm doing is I'm going back to the basics, okay? I have a couple things in mind, and I want to, I want to throw it out at you. So taking a look at this daunting list, I'm thinking, thinking about some roasted chicken. How, how is Gray with chicken? Loves it. Yeah. And, and yeah. the two of you? That's You're good? And I'm thinking about a sauce with that. I'm thinking about kind of a Latin fusion thing going on here. So we're doing some chimichurri sauce that will marinate the chicken legs in. Love chimichurri. Yeah. We need a starch now. So I'm feeling like rice. Rice is safe and there's a lot of ways to do it. And how about peppers? Do you like peppers? Yeah. They're yeah. sweet. They're beautiful. They're vibrant. So I'm thinking a, a bell pepper saute. Yeah. So everything that I've thrown at you, you will eat. Yeah. And it's not on that list. Nope. All right. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is we're going to go do some shopping right now, and then we'll head back to my kitchen, and we'll get to work. Okay? okay. Sure. Okay. All right. So let's get going. Okay. If you want to set those bags down right here. Okay. Carlo and Lisa, I actually want to introduce you to my friend. This is Dr. Dana Wallace, who just happens to be an allergist, and not only an allergist, Hi. but Hi. the president of the American Hi. College of Hi. Allergy, Hi. Asthma, and Immunology. So if there's somebody that can support you better, I don't know where they're at. So Carlo and Lisa Navarro, like so many of us, are not only heads of their household, but head chef at home. 
a job made more complex for the Navarros because according to their physician, their 19-month-old girl, Gray, is allergic to, get this, dairy, wheat, gluten, buckwheat, casein, sunflower seed, whey, <laughs> eggs, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, peas, sesame, <laughs> coconut, tomato, garlic, oranges, strawberries, watermelons, and possibly chickpeas. And let's not forget that Carlo is allergic to fish. Right. <laughs> so Dana, what do you think about that? You, you all must have been overwhelmed when you heard that news and just so frightened. Yeah. I, I can't imagine how you start to even think about planning a menu for <laughs> all of those allergies. Yeah. I'm not the allergist for Gray and I don't really know her history, but I have patients that come in who also bring a long list of food allergies. As I sit down with, for the first new patient visit, the parent will pull out the list, just like you did, and they'll hand it to me. And more often than not, what they're reading from is test results from allergy testing, usually right. blood work. Right. And you know, the parents have equated that to a diagnosis of food allergy. But after we talk and we do some diagnostics, we usually can shorten that list. The gold standard, you know what that is? It's called an oral food challenge. And we have to sometimes very cautiously feed the child what we think they may be allergic to under medical supervision, emergency carts ready, just in case we need it. <laughs> then we know for sure. I can't speak for Gray because maybe, indeed, she does have to avoid all these foods. I don't know. What are some of the challenges that you deal with when you're trying to put a meal together yeah. for Gray? I'm, I'm basically opening up the fridge and staring at it, and, and I really don't know where to start. And um, I want to make food that's good for you know myself that I like, or what Lisa likes, and ultimately what Gray can eat. And yep. right now it seems like she can't eat much, so it's definitely, <laughs> definitely a challenge. So what I say is stop feeling overwhelmed by what chefs are cooking on TV with the fancy ingredients difficult recipes, the expensive cooking gadgets. Today, I'll show you how to cook easy and healthy in a home filled with children, adults, and a lot of food allergies. <laughs> so let's get cooking. All right. So to get this started off, we're moving into our cilantro chimichurri. Okay. Dana had already started this a little bit earlier by washing some cilantro. So Lisa, what I want you to do is to work with her to get that dried off on the paper towel. Okay. A chimichurri in general is a Latin American condiment and it's used as a marinade and also as a topping. Typically, it's made with parsley, garlic, vinegar, and olive oil. And a lot of times there's citrus like orange peel thrown into it. We need to make some modifications to this so that Gray can have this. So what we're doing is we're gonna take out the garlic and actually use some shallots instead to get that savory flavor. Okay. Also, instead of using the orange peel, we can just take that completely out. We're gonna add some mint to this. Okay. We're gonna keep the parsley and we're gonna add some cilantro. So we're making a cilantro chimichurri. Sounds good. We'll get started on this. What I need from you is to, Lisa, if you could pluck off all these mint leaves sure. right here. And then Carlo, go ahead and grab the parsley and the cilantro. Okay. And we're gonna put that on the cutting board and chop that up roughly. We'll bring this right here so we can get the cord out of the way. Now, how, you know, how daunting is it for you? You obviously have a job during the day. You come home to work. Is this something that you're doing a lot together in the kitchen? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. Uh, what do you think about that, Lisa? Is, uh, is he uh, fibbing? I think I'm an integral part of this whole process. <laughs> but I do most of the cleanup in... Uh, he doesn't really let me chop, so. Right. Well, we're going to see if we can change that around, maybe give Carlo a break from the head chef job here. Yeah. That'd be good. What I have in my hand right now is some shallots. Shallots are a member of the onion family. What I did is we actually rinsed these under a little bit of cold water mm -hmm. because that helps to make them less bitter, which is really important because onions and shallots have a tendency to be really strong. Let's go ahead and dunk those in there right now. All right. And I'm going to add the shallots just right in there. And it smells awesome. It smells really fresh in here right now. We're gonna add a little bit of water to this, okay? Water, and then Lisa, go ahead and grab the olive oil. Okay. I've got some vinegar that's going in right now, and you're gonna add the olive oil. I'll tell you when. Okay. We're gonna go with a couple tablespoons, okay? Keep going. Keep going. Good, that looks like a lot of olive <laughs> yeah. oil, but we're using this sparingly. 
With all those ingredients in there right now, we're looking at a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and this is the cool part. This is cooking right now, okay? Nice. We've thrown it in here, and now what you have to do is just push the button. All right. I'm gonna hold the top. What we're looking for is for this to basically emulsify or blend all together. We don't want huge chunks of leaves in here at all, okay? This is done. Right. See, I can do that. It's that quick? <laughs> You're already feeling well, like you know how to know, cook yeah, and take see? control. Right. Okay? So what we have with this chimichurri, we're going to clear out this area right now because we're going to get ready for our roasted chicken legs. Okay. All I'm going to do is pour the chimichurri. It's a little bit, it's a little bit chunky, but right. that's okay. We're going rustic. We're going to hold this aside for the chicken legs, which we're going to do right now. If you could set it right okay. here and get this out of the way. So. Roasting chicken legs, okay? Right. A couple things going on right here. The thing that's great about the roasted chicken legs is it's portable. So Gray, 19 months old, can take it and kind of gnaw on it, right? right. Yeah, she, and have a good time it. with it. <laughs> this is also great for you or you, Lisa, because if you overcook these, they're very forgiving. And because it's dark meat, it's really flavorful and juicy no matter what. What we're gonna do is spike it and make it really delicious. So it's also we, low on the budget, so that's good too. Low yeah. on the budget. We're looking mm -hmm. actually at about 40% less than white meat chicken or mm -hmm. chicken breasts. What I want to do is I want to season these before we actually make a marinade or add the mm -hmm. marinade to this. A little salt and a little pepper on each side. All right. And then I will turn those. And while we're, while we're working in here right now, you know, I want to make the point that just like it's important to look out for my patrons who are eating my food in the restaurant, I need to do the same thing in my kitchen. I actually had one of my interns eat a banana yesterday and come to me with her, th with her hands around her throat and she was sweating profusely. I know she's allergic to fish, just like Carlo. I asked her where her epinephrine was. She said she forgot it. We immediately had to rush her to the hospital and now I have epinephrine in my kitchen this very day. So right here, they're always accessible. Now I know that you have one as well, right? right. You carry it everywhere, or do you sometimes find yourself forgetting it? Forgetting it sometimes, so. Most of the time. Most and how time. many do you have? Do you have one or two with you at all times? Usually I have grays, but I only have usually just one. And the point we like to make is always have to have two. You never know when you'll need that second dose. And if something happens and you accidentally don't get the first dose in, you've got a backup. Okay. That sounds good. So, this is where we're at. We got the seasoning on one side. I'm going to flip this over, mm -hmm. right like this. We're going to hit that with some salt and pepper on the other side. Okay. With the marinating process, it's actually really convenient. Hold that open for me right there. We're going to go into the Ziploc bag. This makes a really easy cleanup, OK? Perfect. You're not making a big <laughs> mess with anything. Cleanup's my duty, so that's great for me. Yeah. Do you find cleanup like enjoyable? No because I can't stand it either. <laughs> but I can't cook, so you know, I'll do the cleanup. <laughs> <laughs> this goes right inside of here. You want to work everything together right there. So make sure that marinade gets between everything. So we've got Ooh. the chicken in the bag, the marinade in the bag. Carlo and I have kind of jostled it a little <laughs> bit together right here. Just in case it springs a leak, you want to have a pan that's sitting by, just like this. Okay. So when we put this in our refrigerator, we don't have any leaks. We have no cross-contamination. We're keeping this nice and isolated once again. Okay, really easy cleanup. Now for the swap out. We've actually had a couple of chicken legs that have already been marinating, so we're gonna grab those quickly. <laughs> Wish that happened at home. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> well, it could, and this is one of those things, it's a shortcut where if you made this ahead of time, you come home from work, you've already got them marinated. Mm -hmm. So now, now you're ready to roll. You're ready to go right into the, the pan, which was what we're gonna do. Grab these tongs right here. We're going right outside of the Ziploc bag, and we're going to place those right into here. Okay. Okay. Now the reason we're leaving these inside of the bag is because we want that residual oil and all that liquid to stay in the mm -hmm. bottom here. We don't want to put all of that in the pan. If we have all that in the pan, we're going to end up steaming this as opposed to roasting this. Oh, okay. So the moisture that you get off of it, it'll actually make it crisp up a lot quicker in that oven. You can leave this while you go to work and you come home. So we're going to pretend that we did that. What I want you to do, Lisa, is to put this inside of the oven right now. The oven's okay. at 400 degrees, and we're going to go for about 45 minutes. 
<laughs> rice is the most popular grain in the world, and half the world's population relies on this daily as a staple item to keep them alive, to keep them going. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the basics. We know what gray can't eat. We know what you can't eat. So when we concentrate on the standards and we work on perfecting these and then we create variations from that, that's where the simplicity comes back in. You know, we're making this an adventure, but also we're empowering you to, to be able to do this and replicate this time after time. What we're gonna do is turn on our sauce pot to about a medium temperature right now. So we're gonna heat this pan up. We've got a couple of ingredients right here. We've got our onions, our celery, and our pepper. This is raw and this is chopped up right now. Now it's important to note that, and I'll have Dana back me up on this, sometimes allergens can dissipate once you've cooked them. And I don't know if you briefly can touch on some, that. Some allergens are much more potent in their raw or a fresh state. And then after you heat them, they have labile allergens that are then degraded so that a person couldn't eat the fresh but could eat the cooked product. What we're going to do is start off with sweating. So sweating is low temperature in this pan. What that does is it helps to soften up these ingredients right here. So they start off crispy and crunchy in their raw form. Mm -hmm. And when we sweat them at this temperature, they're actually going to soften up and become sweeter over time. What I want you to do, Carlo, is mm -hmm. give that a little stir. We want to make sure everything inside of this saucepan right now is cooking. We want to make sure it's all covered with that oil because that's what's going to keep it from burning. And that's what makes it cook a little bit faster. Just like that. We let this sweat for about two to three minutes. And now what I want you to do is, Lisa, can you take the rice? Sure. We got a medium grain white rice right here because that's what Gray likes. <laughs> Go ahead and toss that in there. And Carla, what's important is you're going to stir this up. We want to make sure that all of this rice, just like those vegetables, get incorporated with that oil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these vegetables are going to infuse their flavor right inside of that rice. I'm going to go ahead and grab some chicken stock. Let's talk about chicken stock for a second. This, basically, this flavoring right here, we got this from a, a package. Mm -hmm. We read the label on it. We know that it has no allergens that are going to conflict with the way that you need to eat or with the way that Gray needs to eat. It goes to the point of the more natural you stay with things, the better off you're going to be. So if you wanted to make your own chicken broth or chicken stock, you could take your own chicken carcass, bones, or with the meat on it, and you could actually simmer that and make your own. So that way you know exactly what you're putting into your bodies and you're in control as opposed to relying on a label. Because sure. sometimes labels can be vague. Yeah, they're, Whether, they're hard to Do you ever have out. trouble reading the labels? Well, yeah, constantly. Sometimes it just says flavoring or you know something generic. And those can be tricky and may indeed contain some of Gray's allergens. So keeping it natural is really easier for most Better people. Way to go. And healthier. And you're, healthier. You're always in control. Is you the point of that. So go ahead and mix that in. What I have for the ratio for this rice is we have about three parts stock to two parts rice. And what we're going to do is going to bring this up to a boil and then let it simmer. So I just want to cover up that rice. And it's going to make it nice and beautiful and tender. As you can see right now, we have some really cool colors going on. This is one of those deals where we just set it and let it go. Nice. So that's going to work and do its magic right now. And this is about multitasking, right? Yeah. So we've got our chicken in the oven. That takes the longest. We've got our rice pilaf going right here. Now we need to work into our bell pepper saute. Who's the one that's introducing her to all these foods? He cooks, so I guess, you know, yeah. whatever he cooks, we just give her. As much as we can, you know, with, with the and list. And it is important to, to start early, particularly in a food allergic child, because if you don't develop those taste buds to enjoy a variety of foods early, mm -hmm. then you may really have a problem. So I think sure. you're doing the right thing. So we're going to the home stretch, right? You ready for this? Sautéing is different than sweating in the fact that sautéing is high heat, okay? So flavor and complexity and like the enjoyment, the satisfaction of eating comes from getting a little bit of color. And we do that not only with eating colors as they are, but with heat on pans. So when we get a little bit of caramelization, that's what makes food really interesting. So we have these really fresh flavors right here and these beautiful colors. We're going to start off with a little bit of olive oil in this pan. And Lisa, if I could have you grab that knob of ginger for me, and if you guys could come sure. over here a little bit closer sure. to the pan. And grab that grater that you see over there. Yep. 
couple things that are going on right here. We'll bring this ginger and this grater over here. First of all, sauteing. We want to make sure that the pan is heating up for about two to three minutes at high heat. Then we add the oil. So if we add it into a hot pan, you got more surface area, which means the oil can heat quicker. Huh. Now, when do we add it? You can actually smell this olive oil right now. Mm. It smells really good. It's a great olive oil. We're waiting for just a little bit of vapor, and we're also waiting for the pan to have a little bit of action. You'll notice that it goes from really sludgy mm -hmm. to really loose, and it just spreads right across the pan. That's when we know we're ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. nice. So we're going to grab these red onions right here. And Carlo and Lisa, be ready with the, the peppers. Okay. We always start off with a saute with the most dense vegetable, because we know that takes a little bit longer to cook. In this case, the red onions. These are beautiful. These are sweet. We're going to hear a sizzle. There we go. <laughs> Magic. That's the sizzle we were looking for right there. Okay. Before we add the peppers, we want to make sure that we stir these up and get all of the oil to once again nestle and surround each of these onions. We definitely got some action going on in the pan. This is because we got that high heat. Okay. We'll just wait just a second for these. So if you want to use if you want to use the fancy technique or just rely with your spoon, Lisa, start with the basics. Okay, all right, I'll try. Let's not get crazy here. <laughs> Go ahead, each of you, and throw those peppers right. in there. Cool. So gray can't have orange. Right. No orange. No oranges whatsoever. That means the zest too. Well, the zest is really a nice compliment because it brightens the flavor of anything. What we can do is we can mimic that in a sense with some fresh ginger. So with ginger as a root. What I want to do for this, instead of using a peeler, mm -hmm. I actually want to take this spoon and invert it just like this. And you see how I'm using my thumb as a spring? Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand this over to you, Lisa. I'm going to see if you can totally do what I was just doing. Okay. Can I use this? You can totally do that. Okay. okay. Now you don't have to gouge too much in it and use a little bit more of the, the spoon tip there. Good job. <laughs> How do you feel about that? This is my extent of cooking right here. Yeah, right. Have you ever That's peeled ginger? Trick, no. I haven't actually. That. I know. We've used it, but Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a variation of this. Okay. Here we go. Uh oh. You're concentrating on the side of the spoon right here. Yeah. What I want you to do instead of over here, I want you to use the tip of the spoon. Oh. Just like that. Okay. You'd be amazed at how it sculpts right around that. Lost the pepper there. It, this wouldn't be cooking if we didn't make a little bit of a mess. Right. All, right? Yeah. Good All you gotta do is throw that guy right back in there. Right. Being mindful, nice. of course. With okay, ginger, it. sometimes it has a tendency to go bad if you peel the whole thing. So here's this is the cool thing. You, you peel what you need. Okay. So that very tip right there, it's got a really nice citrus smell to it. Did you mm -hmm. smell it? I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again. Bright, vibrant. We also have some shallots right there. Lisa, I want you to throw the shallots in here right okay. now. Same thing as what we did with uh, the chimichurri earlier. Mm -hmm. Shallots are acting like the garlic component. Okay. It brings a nice savory note. That's really Next, cool <laughs> see this right here? I'm using a, a grater. It's just a small grater. You could use a, a cheese grater if you wanted to. Okay. I'm taking this. You're noticing that there's not a lot falling into the pan. It's because it's all on the back of this right now. Mm -hmm. So once you get what you need on the back of there, a little tap right into the pan, mix that together. Mm. I'm getting hungry. You're cooking right now, good. isn't that? <laughs> Grab some salt, some pepper, a couple pinches. All right, not too much. To we, do don't, we don't want to go salt crazy. Maybe more. one more little pinch. Okay. And a little bit of pepper. Thank you. Mm. Good. Mix that in. We're going to take that off the heat, OK? Mm. Looks great. See that, yes. Dana? And you didn't overcook good. it. That's great. That's a lot, a lot of beautiful color right there. Remember, we eat with our eyes. Mm -hmm. Really important. Let's take a look to see what's under here. Ooh, nice. Nice. So we can see that the rice in the pilaf has doubled in size, if not a little bit more. So all of the liquid is being absorbed. So this takes about 15 to 20 minutes to do a pilaf. Mm -hmm. We've got some really beautiful color going right here. Nice. What I'm going to do is kill the heat on this guy. Completely done cooking. Mm -hmm. This done cooking. Now, what do we have to do? What, what did you throw in the oven earlier? A chicken. A chicken. chicken. Yeah. Hard. So this is the best part. We've had about 45 minutes on another batch that I started <laughs> earlier. 
This is what Ooh. we're looking at. This is what we're looking wow. at right here. I'm gonna use this hot pad. So as you can see, take a look at this, Dana. Come in wow, here. Wow, that looks wonderful. The pan is hot, so keep an eye out. They, they shrunk good. just a little bit. They shrunk a little bit by about a third, but you can see how they're almost crispy and caramelized. And then we have mm -hmm. the chimichurri on there for really nice flavor variation. Now it's time to see if we're all talk or if this food actually tastes good. And who are the best judges for that? Well, our family, and especially little Gray. There she is right now. Now I know kids are tough, tough judges when it comes to food, <laughs> so I want to recap really quickly before we feed her. We made our roasted chicken legs with chimichurri. We see those eyes getting bright right now. We've got our rice pilaf, and we have our bell pepper saute. So the one thing I want to do is quickly, we're going to do a couple bell peppers on everybody's plate. Mm. Just like this. We've already got Gray's plate set aside. We're going to do a chicken leg. I believe that food is meant to be touched just a little bit here. So yeah. we're going rustic <laughs> right on here. And then, of course, what I want to do is pass this right over right. to you to have Gray give that a try. Want to try some chicken? Let's see what happens some... here. Yeah. Gray is eating that. She it likes looks it. like she's having a good time with it. Dana, this is for you. Thank you. Mm. We'll get Lisa's to her in just a second. Yeah. I'll taste some ingredients. There you go. Right. I want you to take a bite of that and tell me what you think. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. That's great. It's good. Really clean. Oh, it's really good. Allergy free. Mm. Perfect for the family. And this is just the starting point mm. of where you guys can go. Mm. Well, that's it for today. See you next time on Chef to Go Food Allergy Intervention. And for more about food allergies, visit anma.org. Till then, I'm Ryan Hootmacher, the Centered Chef, wishing you wellness. Thank you.